This video is brought to you by Crutchfield and their 50th anniversary celebration promo. And you know what? 50 years is a long time to be in business. And if you don't know Crutchfield, they are a huge online business that has a huge range of products in hi-fi that you can choose from on their website. And Crushfield being 50 year into the business, their customer service is excellent. So you don't have to worry about, you know, something happening to your unit and they can't help you. No, they're going to be able to help you. They're going to be able to guide you in the right direction because they have experts there that can do all that. Also, they have a 60 day money back guarantee. I know for a fact that not a lot of retailers are in the position to give you that kind of return policy or return window. Also, within that 60 days, let's say, you find a better pricing. You can tell Crushfield, you can email them and they will match the pricing. Again, something that is not widely done in this industry as not many retailers are able to do this. So to recap, excellent customer service, 60 day money back guarantee return policy and a 60 day uh, price matching guarantee. So give it a try, their promo. It's time for a change. Every year, I try to make some type of change to my listening room, to my workflow, so that I can make my work more efficient, push out content faster, but also do it in a meaningful way. And what I mean by that is before, what I did was that I had all my gear in the basement, and I would go downstairs and grab something if I needed to try it right away. And that was admittedly a whole mess of a situation because you would think it's not a big chore going downstairs, grabbing an amplifier, coming back up, and plugging it into my system. But it did become a chore, not gonna lie. And it, it would have been just so much more efficient if I can just turn around and grab an amplifier from my listening room. And more than anything, the, the mess was driving me absolutely crazy. So what I did is I got this rack. This rack costs about $200 Canadian and it is a strong rack, industrial grade. So I got this rack and my thought process was, well, I definitely cannot fit everything on here because Yeah, so my thought process was, well, I will just have gear here that I use all the time, my reference, uh, stuff that gets used a lot, stuff that's ready for review next. So that's what I thought this rack would be used for. But it ends up always a mess on the floor, you know, gear being put on the floor, which I hate, gear being stacked on top of each other, even though I do put little felts just so that it doesn't get scratched up or anything. Even then, I'm just not a fan of this, and I think I'm putting too much stress on this rack, which always makes me anxious. So what I decided to do was get another rack. Oh, and by the way, my plan is to, while I'm reorganizing the rack system, I would just share with you what's going on in my listening room, as well as the gear that I'm reorganizing. I'll pick something up and just talk about it. Like for example, this ad come right here. Now, as you can see, I have two of these Adcom amplifiers here. These are power amplifiers. And one of them is a vintage collector piece that I have acquired myself just to, you know, have it around. I've had the thing forever. And the other one is actually a new product. And by just looking at the two from the front, you probably can't tell which one is which. And we'll talk about that. But it's interesting because despite these looking very similar, they actually sound totally different. More on that later. Okay, so finally got the rack built. So this is really nice. I might actually even add a third one over here, but we'll see how it goes. So far, I'm really happy with how this is looking. Uh, it's it's great. I, I see a lot of use case for uh, for this rack right now and I'm getting excited. So let's move, first of all, before we touch anything here, let's move some of the stuff from this rack to this rack. And as I'm moving it, I'll talk about it. Uh, so first of all, here is the newest product that just came in. This is the Denafrips Eris uh, 2, 12th generation. So I reviewed the original a long time ago, and this is the 12th generation. Now, I don't know the exact changes. I haven't looked up the exact changes from the original to the 12th generation, but people say the 12th generation is better. So I'm interested in hearing this stack. Now, I did hear this stack for the first 48 hours, and we'll talk about that in a bit, why 48 hours, but I really like it. First of all, it's basically the Ares 2. I get the same micro detail, the nuances. Uh, it's a small DAC, but very heavy, very well built. Still, I think this is a king when it comes to 
that DAC price category, R2R technology, uh, just what's not to love? I, I think this is a really viable choice for a lot of music lovers out there. So I'm gonna put this right here. This rack uh, spacing, I made it short for smaller units just like this. So that can be nicely placed in there. Three Shanling pieces right here. Uh, first one, this is a CD player. Uh, a bit dusty here. It gets so dusty in here, man. Like, why? I dust every single day. Uh, this is the EC3 stereo CD player. And it's a top loading CD player, which I really dig. Love that. So, yeah. I heard it for 48 hours. Love it. Um, so I'm going to be doing a deep dive on this unit right here. So next one is also a Shenling piece. Like I said, I have three pieces here. Also listen to it for the 48 hours. And again, a top loading CD player. This is the ET3. So this is a transport. So it does not have a DAC built inside like this one does. This one does not. So I'm going to put that right beside. And then the next one is going to be another Shenling piece. Now this one's interesting. This is the EM7. And this one is basically a streamer and a DAC, but and a headphone amplifier with balanced out, and it has a screen like this, which is, which is, which is wild, right? Like that's crazy. I love that. That's why I got it. I think this will be a good contender to the um, DMP A6, DMP A8, and we'll see how it functions. But I really love the look and the sound of this. When I first hooked it up, I was like, whoa, that's great resolution for this price range. It's, this is not very expensive either. So, okay, then I'm gonna put this right on top of the Denifrips because there's no problem there. I might put a little felt under it after the video, but um, yeah, that's going right there. Okay, so before we go any further, let's talk about the 48 hour mark. So the 48 hour thing is when the product comes in, I test it for 48 hours, play around with different gear, different speakers, different matching, and see if it's a good sounding product, if it's something that I can vibe with that I want to put on my channel. So about 25% of products that come in, come in here do get sent back if I find it to be like a bad product. And just to be clear, just because I find it a bad product doesn't mean that you will find it a bad product. Uh, and that's why I don't want to focus on the negative reviews. I want to focus on what is a good match, what is a good synergy. So in my videos, I always talk about what is a good amplifier with the speaker, what is a good synergy with that streamer, so on and so forth. So I want to concentrate more on that and making my content more about what goes well with what instead of focusing on the negative aspects or dissecting the unit. Because at the end of the day, this channel is not an objective channel, let's face it, right? This is a subjective channel where I talk about my experiences and my journey and you follow along. And for that, I think it's more valuable for me to talk about gear I like so that I don't torture myself sitting down and listening to something I don't enjoy just to report to you guys that it sucks. I, I think that's just kind of meaningless. But also, I talk about the critiques, right? The the little things that I wish was different or something that I find unintuitive, right? And it's all my opinions, but at the end of the day, I find the pros to outweigh the cons and that's why I review it. But it's not like there's a, it's a perfect product. I always point out stuff that I don't like about it, stuff that I think can be improved about it. So I like to critique, not criticize. And that's two different things. Critiquing is for the positive, something that manufacturers can change maybe in the future. And we've seen that, and I don't take full credit for it, but Eversolo adding things to the DMP A6 and the A8, um, things that I mentioned. Again, I'm not taking full credit for that, but you know, it's nice to see. Criticism is different. Criticism is just saying this product sucks, the end. And that's something I don't wanna do because it doesn't bring any value. Uh, for you or the manufacturer or myself. Maybe at the end of the day, at least for me, you know, viewers may clap going, good job, and say like, uh, your credibility went up. But, so I hope that at least gives you a little bit better insight to what goes on behind the scenes and why most of my videos are positive reviews, even though I do have critiques in there. Now, when it comes to sponsor videos, that's something I wanna talk about very quickly. So, sponsorships. It's the big word in the audio industry, uh, you know, YouTubers getting paid, you know, getting free products, yada, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, uh, I want to make it very clear. My videos that are sponsored are disclosed. In the first 
few seconds of the video, I announced the sponsorship. And yes, I've been sponsored by Samsung, I've been sponsored by Sony, I've been sponsored by LG, I've been sponsored by some audio companies, some non-audio companies, and most of my sponsors are actually non-audio companies, okay? And so whether you have a problem with sponsorships or you don't, uh, it's disclosed for your you know, discretion. Now, what I do have a problem with, and I don't wanna say it's a, it's a problem, but a misunderstanding from viewers is when you see a positive or exciting video where I'm so excited about a product, right? Now, I don't wanna be that reviewer that has to retain their excitement. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't wanna sound boring. And also, I get excited about a product, like if I'm excited about this Denifrip stack or any of these products, I wanna show how excited I am because that's truthfully how I feel about the product. But I know how that can come across like as a shill or like over hyping a product or whatever. And I get that. But I just wanna make sure that you understand that unless it's a paid sponsorship, free product or money, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. I, I, I disclosed it in the first few seconds of the video. So most of the stuff that I review, unless it's disclosed, it does not contain a sponsorship. Also, if you look at my videos, most of my videos are actually sponsored through Patreon. So what Patreon is, is viewers like yourself that donate a certain amount of dollar per month to support the channel so that you don't, I don't have to have sponsorships every single video, right? And if you look at my videos, like 95% of them don't have any sponsorships, none. And I choose my 5% of sponsorships very carefully. And I don't wanna sound like I'm doing everything perfectly. I'm learning as I go and I have made mistakes in the past where I chose the wrong sponsorships, like some gaming app or something like that. And that's not something that brings value to you guys. So I try to pick my sponsorships that makes sense. And a lot of the times the reason that I don't have a lot of sponsorship is because I request them to send the product or whatever the sponsorship is about first so that I can check out the product, check out you know if it's worth doing a sponsorship video and then move on from there. So a lot of the times companies won't agree to that because obviously they have to send in their product for evaluation and then you know we can talk about the sponsorship which is a long process and most companies are not okay with that. But at the end of the day, it's all disclosed. So that's all I can do as a content creator to be transparent as possible. And if you have a problem with it, I mean, there's nothing that I can possibly do. This is how the business is run. Also, if your problem with sponsorship is that uh, you're under the impression I have to say only positive things because it's a sponsored video, that is not true. Every single time I do a sponsored video, there's a lot of work involved in the contract. So there's a huge amount of contract that I have to read through and sign. And in that contract, I read very carefully so that there is no trap to say, well, you have to only say positive things. You can't critique the product. Right, uh, so that is a no-go for me. So contracts, always I read it fully and make sure to take out any of those little things, details that make me bound to being a reviewer that only needs to say positive things in a sponsored video. And of course, like I mentioned, a lot of the products that I get in here for sponsorships, I test anyways first before I agree to any sponsorships or whatever so that there's less chance of that happening. Also, so there's a lot of checklists and a lot of checks that happen before tests that happened before a sponsorship. So anyways, that was just a brief explanation on how sponsorship works and behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna change anyone's mind. I know that it's gonna be entirely up to you on whether you're okay with sponsorships or not, but I will have sponsorships like for today's video, Crutchfield. Okay, enough ranting, let's get back to work. Okay, so I actually made this rack the uh, the biggest gap so I can fit some large monitors that come in here maybe, uh, you know, I just made it extra wide just so that I have that clearance for certain speakers. Now, I do have not a huge monitor, but I do have a speaker here. So let's put that on here. I, I, I wanna get stuff off the floor. It's driving me nuts. Bad boy right here. It's Thomas's creation. Uh, Thomas uh, has a brand called Galleon. And this is their uh, bookshelf speaker, Voyager TS. And it's a transmission line speaker. And it fits, it fits. So usually I put stuff here that is presentable, uh, that looks nice. I'm not a fan of the look of the speaker, but I heard it for, and it didn't take 48 hours. It took like 
two hours, and I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and I, I just messaged Thomas going like, wow, you nailed it with this product. And honestly, like this speaker, um, it sounds very, very good. And when I say good, I don't mean like this is not the most neutral speaker. It is not. This is a fun sounding speaker. It has incredible bass. Uh, and when I say incredible, I don't mean like the most textured or nuanced bass, but it's like such a fun sounding speaker. I mean, he, he nailed it. The Quiver designed this for Thomas. I mean, uh, just nailed it like the sound signature reminds me a lot of that ls 35 a kind of character warm and luscious but also that mid-range pops imaging and sound staging is amazing and this is like a thousand dollar speaker so and these woofers i believe is from sp acoustics anyways amazing mm. see i get excited about the things thomas isn't paying me you know that he's cheap <laughs> i feel special I wonder why Jay asked me to record that. <laughs> okay, so the next product is the Geshelli DAX. So I did this uh, interesting thing with Geshelli. So I emailed Geshelli and so if you don't know Geshelli, they make affordable DAX. So I was like, hey, what if we got the J2 DAC? Both of these are J2 DAX. One is basically with no upgrades whatsoever. It's just a basic model about $300, $400. Uh, so, and it, for that price, this is a really nice finish. I was kind of, I was kind of like, looking at it, going like, "Whoa, this is, this is really cool for that price." I mean, yeah. And I heard it for the forty-eight hours, and I was like, "Yeah, this four hundred dollars, this is good. This is great for that price. Absolutely amazing." I put that right up here. Um, and then this one is again same thing, J two DAC, but with the all the upgrades, the finish, everything. So this is brought up to about a thousand dollars i believe and so i was interested on how does this compare to the basic model so what does the upgrades get you in terms of sound so that's a little video coming up okay the next is the uh, ps audio airlines now this one i reviewed already so it's going to go back sometime soon uh, but I do have other PS Audio components in here that I want to test with this because like I mentioned in that review, this is a fantastic streamer with PS Audio gear. It's a, just a very good match. So, I put that right up here. Another thing that I reviewed, the Audio Node 0.1X. Again, same deal, uh, something that I enjoy a lot. This is actually Vincent Belanger, the celloist's uh, personal DAC. I have it on loan, long-term loan. Uh, he just he can have it back anytime he wants. I told him that multiple times. But uh, this is gonna stay here until I can get this back to him. I don't actually know where I'm gonna put this right now. Okay, I've decided I'm gonna put all the small stuff up here. So I'm gonna move all this up here and then I'm gonna put this up here. Okay, and then this is the matching CD player. This is the CD0. So this is DAC0, this is CD0. And I actually had a pairing, this pairing going on for a while. Sounds really good. Um, very, very like smooth. That typical audio note sound. <laughs> Just absolutely love it. it. That looks really good here. But I feel like I can use more space here. I, I don't know what I'm going to put over here. It's leftover space. So I did manage to stack it up here. Uh, they do stack up here, so that's good. And then I'm going to put this. Uh, this is actually a DAC module for something else. And then this is actually oh a cambridge cd player look at that look at that beautiful wood panel right there right you know what you know what's cool about this it comes off like bro that's so smart and then you have these like um i have another other other side panels here the the black finish and they can just slap it on it's crazy you can finish you can change the finish and it's just gorgeous. I love it. I wonder if this goes on here. It does. It does go on here nicely. Okay, and then this is the Cambridge Audio uh, in, uh, all in one. So it has an amplifier, it's Hypex module design. I'm not a fan of Hypex modules usually, but this one's nice, uh, especially with this combination going on. It's quite nice. I wonder if this is going to fit. And then this is the Remote control, which is nice, always nice. Try to keep all the remotes with the unit. And then this is the side wood panels. Let me just quickly take this out and show it to you. 
So it's not just a black finish, it has like these beautiful design on it, which is really nice. I, and you just slap it on if you want a different finish, which I think is amazing. Great idea. Okay, next is the DMP A8. As you guys know, this is a nice unit. I mean, I love this unit. Um, I'm keeping it here for reference with comparison to other products, but we're gonna put that right here. That's nicely right beside the, the speaker. And then we're gonna bring over this Jennifer's No, is this heavy? This is the Jennifer's Athena preamplifier. I'm gonna put this right on the second lower shelf. So this preamplifier, I've had it for almost two years now. Um, it's on long-term loan from Dana Fripps, uh, just because it's so hard to ship it back. And I really dig it. Uh, I haven't reviewed it, but it's like in a lot of my videos because it's such a good pairing with some stuff. Absolutely love this um, preamplifier. I do think that it's good with certain gear and not so much with other gear. And you can follow my reviews and get the grim glimpse of that. The next is the YBA integrated amplifier. This is the IA. 350. Holy crap, it's heavy. Okay, I'm gonna put this on top of the denim reps. Like so. Now this integrated amplifier, I absolutely dig it. First of all, it's different sounding, and that is great because it caters to a certain type of sound characteristic that some people will like. Some people will hate it. First of all, I find the mid-range on the speaker to be simply magical. It is not bright, but it does have a little bit of that sparkle going on, and the bass control is phenomenal. So I have to test it more, but that was my impression on the first 48 hours testing with the boards and speakers that I have going on right now, as well as the macro speakers that I had in here before. So anyways, moving on. Okay, so next is this unit right here. This is the Musical Paradise MPDX DAC. It's a tube DAC, so you see two tubes up there, right? And uh, I plugged this in, this arrived three days ago. So this has not passed the 48 hour, 72 hour mark yet because I haven't played around for that long yet. Um, but it arrived three days ago, unboxed it yesterday and it sounds great. I hooked it up once. Uh, so far, very happy with the sound quality of this thing. I think this could be a real contender. I believe this works as a streamer as well. I'm not sure. I just used the DAC in it. Yeah, just really love this right here. I'm gonna put this uh, right beside the Denifers. This is the AGD preamplifier. So they have one that is like all, uh, all in one with a streamer uh, and a DAC. And this one's just a solo preamplifier. It has XLR outputs, inputs, you know, lots of different in, uh, analog outputs and inputs for the RCA. So yeah, great, great, great option. Um, I think it's a really good small preamplifier. Although I don't think it's the best match with AGD amplifiers, ironically, I do think that other preamplifiers, like two preamplifier, like the A and K that I have going on right there, is actually a better match in my opinion, for my purpose, my taste. But this, if you want to hear what AGD is about, I guess this is a matching preamplifier. I have this in here right now still because I bought the AGD monoblocks and then uh, this one I haven't bought yet, but he wants, uh, Alberto from AGD wants me to try this with the tempo that he's sending in for review. So that just stacks on top of each other very nicely, creating like a stack. So I'm excited to try that out. So I'm gonna put this right here on top of the DMP. Next, I'm going to put this uh, Orchard Audio Stock Crimson Amplifier. This is a gone fed design, so much more affordable. I'm gonna put this right here for now. So this, my friends, is a Gonfet design amplifier. So it is a Class D amplifier, but as you know, I'm a big fan of Gonfet design these days. Uh, I bought the AGD amplifiers after hearing this amplifier. So I wanted to make sure that I can't get a cheaper AGD first, right? And surely enough, when I compare the AGD to the Orchard Audio, it is different. I'm gonna just keep it at that for now. It is quite different. The difference is definitely there. But the Orchard Audio, I was quite shocked with a few things. Few things it does really well and I'm actually in love with this thing. And I think it kind of solidifies my uh, kind of perspective on Gonfet designs now. I've been researching it, I've been looking into it. Uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing technology. I absolutely think this is the future of Class D amplifiers or amplifiers in general going forward. So I think it looks great. I think it's a lot more clean and the flexibility of this rack is just 
great. I mean, just the fact that I can grab some stuff here and then put a plug it in my listening room right away is just an amazing uh, thing for me. So I'm absolutely very happy with it. I may add a third rack there later, but we'll see uh, depending on if I get more stuff in and if this hoarding this becomes a more of a problem. I don't think it's a problem yet. No, not at all. And in terms of my listening room, I would go through all of it, uh, but we'll do that on a, another video. And most importantly, there are things that's constantly changing in my listening room. For example, this rack that I have had for years. I mean, I've had this rack for like three, four years now. It's going to be out the window and I'm getting a new custom rack and it's being, being built right now with custom feet and exact specifications to how I want it. It's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna be lovely. So this room is gonna be changing throughout this year. Uh, so maybe once I'm done, when I feel like I'm done, and I think that's kind of hard because I'm never done, I'm always changing things up. So once the room is done, I'll share the full details and talk about my references and so on. But one of the things that's never changing is going to be bonsais. Yeah, my girlfriend has a problem. They're my babies. 